What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now I wanted to give you an update because I did just make a pretty big shift in my portfolio. I took $10,000 out of stablecoin and I'm now moving that over to a complete uh, to a specific narrative that I think is going to kind of lead this rally that we're seeing right now going into 2024 and likely 2025. Now the question of the day of course is what is that narrative and well that narrative is quite clear that narrative is L1s. Now I know it's boring I know it's not what you were probably hoping for but trust me when when I tell you this, L1s are the place to be, at least right now, in my opinion. Now, let me actually go over, and I'm just going to reference HG Access. You guys know that I did make a um, video yesterday explaining what HG Access is, how you can get access to it, all of these things, more information coming soon because we are launching this on Monday, but we have been filling this thing with content, so you're as soon as you join in, you're going to get a shit ton of value, right? But what you can see here, as I have now said um, earlier today, as we are now seeing Bitcoin dominance falling in this micro altcoin season in full effect, I'm shifting some of my focus to the altcoins that generally lead every altcoin rally l1s not only do we see them do exceptionally well during alt rallies due to increased on-chain volume as new projects build on chain but they are also generally much safer than a standalone project or company from a marketing perspective i'm also noticing a decent sized uptick in the amount of l1 teams reaching out for marketing and executing their public launches many of them are holding off for most of 2023 here are a few examples of large and small l1s that i personally am investing in and then i gave some examples so obviously your large caps we have things like solana ada cardano and avax clearly if Solana is doing well, we'll usually see Avalanche doing well behind it. And I know everyone hates Ada Cardano for some reason. It's kind of like a joke to hate it at this point. I do believe that it does have a ton of potential, especially in this next rally, because they are finally, in my opinion, caught up to a lot of the masses within L1. Now, in terms of mid cap, I actually did add a new one to my portfolio just today, and that is Cadena. I've kind of, I was waiting to pull the trigger, and I was like, you know what, today's the day. And then obviously Phantom is one I've held for a very long time, um, but I did up my bag on that a bit as well. Now, another few, um, if we're going down towards the micro caps, you guys know we did a video on SireChain not too long ago. That was maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And I've actually recently introduced mainnets to my portfolio as well. Now, a little bit of an update on what mainnets is. What you can see here is mainnets is a generation three layer one. Now, what they're going to be doing is their whole idea here is to kind of take what has happened within the world of L1, take a lot of the lessons that have been learned from other layer ones, and again, build on top of that. Make things better, make things faster, make things more scalable, because if they can do that, then obviously they can continue to um, take part in the upgrade of blockchains as time does go on. Now, in terms of kind of some of the comparisons that you can see between their blockchain and say Bitcoin, Ether, BNB, what you can see here is like, for example, again, they're a third generation in comparison. BNB is a first generation, ETH is a second generation, Bitcoin's a first generation. But what you can see, the main differences that come from these third uh, third generation uh, layer one, sorry, are the transactions per second. That's really what makes a difference. Seven per second for Bitcoin, 30 per second for Ethereum, 10 per second for BNB, 2000 per second for nets. Now, why is that important? Well, the reason that's important is pretty clear. What we've seen in the past, especially in 2021, for many blockchains, such as even Solana, right? Even Ethereum, for some of those more layer, um, you know, generation one, generation two blockchains, is that they can't handle this new wave of crypto and the craziness that comes with it. Whenever we saw gaming cryptos absolutely popping off, the gaming sector itself being built on chain, it was slowing down whatever the chains that it was on, and the chains just weren't fast enough in general, right? And so what we're seeing is a lot of these third generation blockchains coming out that that can provide the infrastructure necessary to be able to be um, efficient if gaming and things of that nature is built on top of it, right? And it's, ex it's extremely crucial because again, I believe that gaming is going to be the one sector that completely bridges the normal world to the crypto world. And we need chains that are fast enough and have enough scalability and just strong enough in general to be able to provide the infrastructure for gaming to do what it needs to do. Now, not only that, though, what you can see here is finality time is also three seconds. Extremely important. You can't be in a game sitting there for 30 minutes waiting for something to happen. It's just not going to happen. Us gaming freaks, we just have a short attention span. So the fact that we can see that finality within three seconds, comparable to something like BNB at 75 seconds, but just a little bit faster, is really good. Now, average transaction fees, also extremely small, also extremely important. Why is it important? Because if you're going to be, say, playing a game, if you're going to be in crypto gaming, and I'm I'm referring crypto gaming a lot, but this isn't the only thing it's important for, but it is one of the most important aspects. So that's why I'm referring to it a lot and giving you examples. But the reason why you want your average transaction fees to be lower, for, especially for crypto gaming, is because there could be a lot of interactions right you might have to mine something you might have to mint something you might have to do this you might have to do that you might have to trade this you might have to trade that you can't be paying crazy fees that's why crypto gaming on eth will never work 
in my opinion, right? And so this provides even better, um, optim, you know, more of an optimal experience for something like crypto gaming and many other things, right? Even from a more enterprise perspective, okay? Let's kind of make these same comparisons from an enterprise perspective. If you have a huge corporation or a huge enterprise that is using a blockchain for whatever they might want to need, maybe payment transactions, maybe data storage, whatever you want to call it, you need them to be able to do as many transactions as possible. It needs to be fast. There needs to be quick finality, especially if they're doing payment processing in that native crypto or something along those lines you don't want a customer standing at your your register for 10 minutes waiting for their payment to go through that sucks right average transaction fee these enterprises won't want to pay a hefty fee because they want to keep their margins and their bottom line as good as possible and so all of these things are again applicable to many different areas of the world itself now as we can see here again all layer ones in terms of node language this is a go node language similar to what we see with bnb here um it's delegated proof of stake comparable to again just your normal proof of stake from something like bnb or solana or even ethereum which is now proof of stake um they have smart contracts clearly that's extremely important and then on-chain governance which i also believe is important and so what you can see here is by kind of optimizing their blockchain for the modern day problems i believe puts these third generation type layer ones in a position to do extremely well and be the ones that will eventually replace some of those layer one those um generation ones generation two layer ones okay so main nets is a beautiful example of one of those cryptos that i personally am looking for and again i know they're one of the ones doing marketing on the back end getting out there they're a partner of my channel as you saw on my twitter they're one of those ones that I believe are doing well. And so that's the reason why I included them in my micro cap purchases. Okay. So overall layer ones are almost always going to lead your rallies. You have to think about it from a perspective of why is that? Because think about this, when meme coins get built, when meme coins gain a hundred million dollars of market cap, whenever they're getting hundreds of millions of dollars of volume, where are meme coins built clearly on chain? Well, what happens? Let's think about this. When that meme coin brings hundreds of millions of dollars on chain, and the volume on chain goes up. That means the native token of that chain is typically being used more. When the volume of that native token typically goes up, we're going to see increased buy pressure. When we get increased buy pressure, what do we get? Increased prices, right? And so as we start to see meme coins popping off, volume popping off, liquidity being injected into these micro caps, that is all directly affecting the blockchains that they are built on. And I mean, we're already seeing that play out. Look at something like Ader Cardano doing extremely well already with its meme coins popping off up 157%. Looking at something like Phantom, although not necessarily having the best, um, you know, rally and compared to everyone else up 150, 160%. Even look at Polygon, which is an L2, but just to kind of give you a good example here, this thing's up 100%. Look at something like, let's go with BNB. Boom, BNB, ton of meme coins launching right now. How much is this thing up? The thing is up 70%. So not necessarily the best, but there are a ton of, a ton of external factors affecting bnb that i think have limited the push but what you get is these layer ones are automatically going to benefit and feed off of the growth in the um, injection of liquidity within these micro caps and meme coins and so that is the reason why i've shifted ten thousand dollars over to my layer one portfolio so with that in mind i hope you guys do kind of get the picture that i'm trying to paint here and I, again i hope you are looking forward to what we're doing with hd access being able to provide info like this and getting it from 10 20 influencers is absolutely nuts so make sure you stay tuned for that because the launch is on monday but with that in mind of course let me know what L ones you are purchasing if you are purchasing any down in the comments below and make sure you do stay tuned because i have another video coming soon breaking down bitcoin dominance and going over a couple more altcoins so if you did enjoy make sure you smash that like button and well i will see you all next time peace out everybody